Hey, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. As a lot of you guys know, I just got back from traveling because I just attended the Eros tour in Houston. We went to night two, which is the Saturday. So I figured today's video would be kind of just be a little bit of a recap of my experience at the Eros tour and my trip in general. So before this video actually gets started, I just wanted to preface by saying that this is going to contain some sort of spoilers for the Eros tour. So if you don't want to be spoiled as in regards to like the experience or the set list or just things like that in general, I would maybe recommend not watching this video. I completely understand. But if you're interested in my experiences, I would love for you to keep watching. So like I mentioned, I attended the Eros tour in Houston. We went to night two, which was the Saturday. I traveled with my two sisters and my niece. Um, we live in Louisiana, so we live about five and a half hours away from the concert venue. So we did travel on Friday to get there in time for Saturday. This is kind of irrelevant, but if anyone's been to Texas, you would know that there's like a giant gas station called Bucky's, and I have been converted into a fan, so that's why I have a beaver shirt. <laughs> um, the back of it says, don't mess with Texas, so I am just engulfing into the culture. But like I mentioned, we made that five-hour journey on Friday night. Um, we, stared at, we stayed in an Airbnb, which luckily was about 15 minutes away from the venue. And I think we got very lucky with that because not only was it very nice, I'm going to try to insert footage where I can and where it makes into the story, but this is kind of where we stayed. So you can kind of see a couple pictures of that. And it was really close to the venue and it was very affordable. So I'm very thankful that we got to stay at a place like this. So the next thing I'm going to insert is the fact that they changed the stadium name to Taylor's version, as you can see in this picture right here. I thought that was kind of crazy after looking at some of Twitter and stuff. I did notice that pretty much every city has been doing something crazy whenever Taylor Swift comes to town. I think one of them even changed the name of the town. So this one is probably a little bit more tame in comparison to the others, but it's still pretty cool that an entire venue would change their name just for like one event. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, the next one is just us outside of the venue. Uh, like I mentioned, I did travel with my two sisters and my niece. Uh, my oldest sister, she dressed up as the uh, Reputation album. And then my other sister and my niece dressed up from the Lover album. I know that my niece is specifically wearing something from the Me music video, which we haven't gotten to on this channel yet. But I know that because she has been working on that costume for months. <laughs> so I do know where that's from. Um, and then my outfit isn't really that special. It was blue, which I do think follows along with the 1989 era, which is another album that I have not actually gotten to on this channel. But I also did have a snake necklace. So I was representing the Reputation series that I'm in and I'm thoroughly enjoying. So, so that's a little detail that I had in my outfit, I guess you can say. And then also we had these uh, heart glasses. It kind of came with my sister's lover outfit, but then... It also kind of matched um, a red video, a 22 video. So there was little things in the outfits that I think kind of made sense for the Eras tour. But what the picture doesn't show is the journey that it took to get there because I'm not even talking about the five hour road trip. I'm just talking about how um, we are very bad at time management and this is completely our fault, but we did miss most of the opening acts just because we decided that we wanted to do something in the morning, so we took my niece to the downtown aquarium um, in Houston, Texas, which was really cool. But by the time I checked the time, it was almost 5 o'clock or 4.30 maybe on Saturday, and we still had to go back to our house to kind of get ready. So we were very rushed <laughs> to get there, and that's what that picture kind of doesn't show. But we probably got to the venue around 6.30, which is actually when the event starts. So by the time we made it all the way up to our section, which I'm going to insert a picture of where we were sitting at right here. As you can see, we had a really kind of cool aerial view of the entire venue. But if you do notice, we are very high up. Don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful for being able to just go in general. But we did not have like the best seats. I will say that we were probably one of the highest possible <laughs> seats. But we were lucky enough to kind of not be behind the stage because probably about six or seven rows or uh, sections away from us was basically behind the stage. So I'm very thankful for what we got, but that's kind of what our view looked like. But, but before we actually got to our seats, we did decide to get some of the food. We even tried to get some of the mirror ball drinks. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about if you've gone to one of the concerts, but they have these special souvenir cups and they literally apparently sold out on night one an hour in. 
and we went on day two so we were kind of crazy to think that that was already sold out but that's what one of the bars told us i'm not exactly sure how true that is but things sell out very quickly i guess because the amount of people that are there and the walk from scanning your ticket to your actual seat is like shoulder to shoulder of people but yet they're the nicest people ever <laughs> like no one likes being sardines in a big crowd i am for sure not one of those people and especially with our niece she is kind of younger so we were kind of like holding on to her for dear life but it's weird because you don't feel in danger at all like these are some of the nicest people i have ever met and i'm not even exaggerating this for a video like everyone was so nice and i've never been to something like that um i guess i'm just comparing it to like big events like football games basketball games things that i've been to where or even other concerts i don't know just the people were so very very nice and it just seemed like everyone wanted to have a good time like even down to the point that people were trading bracelets with each other even if you didn't have anything to offer them my niece got a couple of them which i'm gonna put on the screen right here and then i even got one um this one i don't know who gave it to me and i know it's a little bit green so it might be kind of weird on the green screen but it basically says, um, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably not going to work, but it says mess of a dreamer. I'm not really too sure what it means, but I don't know. I got a friendship bracelet from someone and I had nothing to offer that person. So I kind of felt bad to not have anything for her in the very, very, very small chance that the person who gave this to me watches this video. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it, but it just kind of makes you feel very welcome to the concert um and that was like one of our first experiences in there so it was already kind of a so it was kind of already setting us up for the greatest success um other than that before getting to our seats we did get all of the stadium food which honestly was kind of mid but that's not a taylor swift thing that was just nrg stadium and now this is the portion of where i'm going to talk about my experiences actually in the concert and the set list and everything that goes along with that pretty sure all of the shows kind of go very similarly so if you've watched some of the shows or if you've been to a show you probably know what i'm about to say but it did start off with the lover album and um from what the songs i remember i have the set list pulled up on my laptop i can kind of remind myself of things that were going on i think i have a very short opening clip but it did open up with a song called miss americana and the heartbreak prince Nothing I was too familiar with, honestly, for the start. And then the rest of the Lover era had Cruel Summer, The Man, You Need to Calm Down, Lover, and The Archer. The ones that I did know was, um, I did know the song Lover, I've heard that before. And then I also did know The Man because that is one of my niece's favorite songs. I don't remember if I do because I'm kind of going to put this in post recording this. But I think I have a video of The Man right here. Uh, she loves that song and I knew some of the words to that one as well. And then the next era was the Fearless era, which is another album that I have yet to get to. But I did know most of the songs on that one because it only had three. It had Fearless, You Belong With Me, and Love Story. I know for a fact I have a You Belong With Me video, so look at this one. So this one was a really, really fun era to experience. And then the next two eras were so good, you guys. The next one was uh, the next one was Evermore. And she did Tis the Damn Season, which if you watched my Evermore series, one of my favorite Evermore songs. And I sang along with that one. So I have a video of that one. Um, she also did play Willow, and that one was way more witchy than I expected. I've watched that music video, and I did kind of catch on because there was like six remixes, if you remember. But that one has had a very different theme from everything else that we had kind of seen so far. 
And I appreciate that because that does differentiate the eras a little bit. But that one went very witchy very fast. So that one was a little confusing to me. But we did hear, but after that, we did hear Marjorie. That one was a very beautiful one. Taylor Swift actually did mention that her mother is from there. So, like, she had a very strong connection to singing that song that night because it is a hometown of where her grandma grew up. So that one was really beautiful to hear as well. And then Champagne Problems was so good. I studied those lyrics because we got that bridge about saying she's fucked up in the head if you want to see it right here. And then, and then one of the best parts was coming out of the Evermore, I kind of thought it was going to be folklore or something that kind of tracks along with the way that we were, with the way that we were progressing. It kind of went from over the top, then the Fearless was like bringing it down a little bit, Evermore brought it down a little bit more. And like vibe wise, I mean like, like chill. I thought next would be folklore and then we're going to kind of raise it back up after that. No. She started the Reputation era. That one I think was my favorite era other than the Folklore era, but this one was so cool. <laughs> I think it's just because it was had such a strong theme like all of the other ones are great don't get me wrong but this one just has such a like story or narrative with it that it just really draws you in and she did ready for it which is a song that i've already heard she also did play delicate which i have not watched on this channel yet but that should be coming very very soon i think i do have a video from delicate so i will include that whenever i record my delicate video um and then she did don't blame me and look what you made me do um the don't blame me was so good i have a literal video of me just kind of being speechless with the high note because that was the last video that i watched right before um the act before actually going to the Eras tour so that was the kind of song that was strongest in my mind and she absolutely killed it i watched the reputation stadium tour video and i honestly think that the Eras tour video that i literally recorded myself was better and that's a high bar to clear like, she did so good and it sounded so good live that I have really nothing else to say other than it was incredible. So it's safe to say that Reputation was probably one of my favorite eras, of course. And then, and then shortly after we moved into the Red era, and this one was a little bit middle of the road for me. I really, really enjoyed Red's Taylor's version when I watched it on my channel. And I think the problem with Red is that it has too much in it because I felt like she kind of just stick to the hits, which is what you would expect from an era's tour. So it's not a knock, but the songs that she played was 22, We Are Never Getting Back Together and I Knew You Were Trouble. And I think if I wouldn't have, and I think if I wouldn't have, made a whole series on the red series i would have really really appreciated the songs that she played but now that i know how many great great songs are on red's taylor's version i kind of wish that she would have subbed out a couple of the major hits just to give us something that maybe we don't always hear live or something along those lines just because i feel like she did that with folklore and evermore she kind of highlighted songs that i really did not expect to be on a set list so i was kind of hoping for a little bit more on the red set list to be honest but the all too well 10 minute version was obviously great. Um, that was one of the loudest I heard the entire stadium. It was insane to see. I think I even have a video of me just panning the entire stadium because I did not think that a 10 minute song could carry such powerful, like, I know it's a great song, but it, it was just crazy to kind of experience that with so many people just screaming those lyrics for how sad of a song it is <laughs> but that was a but that was definitely the highlight of the red portion of the tour
Then next up was the folklore section. And I know I keep saying that was my favorite. That was my favorite. But this really was my favorite set list. Um, she, I think this was also the one that had the most songs. Because she did The One, Betty, The Last Great American Dynasty, August, a part of Illicit Affairs. But it was the best part of Illicit Affairs. <laughs> um, and then My Tears Ricochet, Cardigan, and that's it. But that's a lot of songs for that album. I think this is also a portion of where her vocals really, really, really shined. And to be honest, she sounded incredible throughout the entire show. I'm actually genuinely confused of how someone can sing for three and a half hours and do it flawlessly, keep everyone entertained, and just sound incredible throughout the entire show. Like, there was never a moment where I was like, ooh, like, you know, like, she sounded great, obviously, throughout. Baby, you talk Um, and then one other thing I didn't mention yet is how interactive she really is with the crowd. It's not necessarily doing like the wave or like talking to a specific person, but almost through every era, she would do some sort of a little bit of a speech or something just to kind of talk to everyone and just make sure that everyone's okay. So I feel like that was also really nice to hear because I feel like you don't hear that very much in concerts or maybe not at least in my experiences I've ever seen something like that where they're actually connected to their audiences um in my most recent concert experiences it has been like festivals and they definitely don't do that maybe because they don't get enough time with the audience but it was just refreshing to kind of see how much she actually cares for the people that are at her tour one of the only issues i had with the folklore set is that peace was not on there i know i'm the only peace fan in the entire world but i really kind of hoped that that one would be on the set list or it would have been our surprise song and it was neither of them so that was my only like disappointment with the folklore set. Um, I don't have a video of My Tears Ricochet, but that one was so crazy. I don't know if anyone's seen TikToks or has seen it in person, but she has her like dancers or her singers dressed in all black behind her. And it's just very like haunting to watch because I know from the series and you guys' comments throughout my series that but that one was like almost like mourning the loss of her music and you really felt that as she was going through that song so i know that so that was another highlight for me personally um also when that song was playing it really just showed of how she can make anything entertaining and i feel like i kind of said that a couple minutes ago but it's incredible how slow songs in a stadium of sixty thousand people can still just be so entertaining like i know sometimes I feel like artists have to keep your attention by doing the most like aunties and everything like that and she really doesn't even when she's just doing some of the most simple things it, it was just so incredible it was just so entertaining I, that's all i can really describe but i also did just realize that i skipped over the speak now section because it was only one song and i actually kind of missed it because i did go use the restroom and i didn't realize that there was going to be any eras that only had one song so i did kind of completely miss the speak now section but i do know the song a little bit from tiktok it's the please don't be i'm not gonna sing it but i kind of know about it but like i really don't have a lot to say about it just because i did miss it and i'm not gonna say it was anything special but i just haven't gotten to that point in the series and everything so I really don't have anything thoughtful to say. <laughs> so then the second to last era was the 1989 era, which is another album that we have yet to get to. But I will admit that this is probably the album that I didn't realize how many songs I actually know from it. I think just because it was such a massive album. Um, but there was Style, Blank Space, Shake It Off, Wildest Dreams, and Bad Blood. I'm almost positive that I've heard every single one of those. Um, I definitely know Shake It Off and Blank Space. I have a video of all of us singing Shake It Off, so I'll put that one in here right now. Um, but that set, but that set was just very hype. It was, it really woke the crowd up because um, I noticed that. 
because I've noticed that a lot of people start sitting down when the slow song starts coming on. Like everyone was standing for the lover section. Everyone was standing for the fearless section. Um, the evermore, most people were sitting down other than the champagne problems one. I noticed kind of people were standing up for that version. Um, I don't know about the speak now one. I kind of missed it. The red section was kind of in between, like some people were standing, but then some people weren't. So I don't know how that one kind of landed for people. Reputation, everyone was standing. That one had everyone on their feet, especially with all of the movements. They had like snakes in like the screens at the bottom. That one was just very intricate. And then most people were sitting for the folklore section, at least from what I could see. So the 1989 really kind of just like jump started the crowd again. And it was really fun. And one of my favorite parts is, I don't think I have a video of this, but they had like literal bikes on the stage where, and and they were just kind of doing tricks with them. And that was some cool, like, is that like background dancers or did she have special people to do that kind of stunt work? But overall, that part was really, really cool as well. And then Bad Blood literally brought out like pyrotechnics. Like we were in the 600 section. So I felt like I was about to lose an eyebrow because like there was fire spewing up everywhere. But it was really cool to see also. And then somewhere in between, they had two surprise songs. Um, one surprise song was from her debut album, and it was called A Place in This World. I didn't know that song, so I don't really have a lot to say about it. Um, she did mention that she feels like she relates to it more now than 20 years ago. So maybe once we get back there, I'm going to remember that and kind of get that perspective whenever we do listen to that album. And then the other one was another song that I really didn't know, and it was called Today Was a Fairy Tale. From what I understand, I'm pretty sure that's a part of Fearless Taylor's version, which I expect to get to very soon. So I think I will also kind of save my thoughts for that whenever I get there eventually. Um, and then the very last era was the Midnight's era. This one also had a lengthy set list as well because it had Lavender Haze, Antihero, Midnight Rain, Vigilante Shit, Bejeweled, Mastermind, and Karma. Um, I thought this was a pretty well-balanced um, era as far as the set list. I feel like she had her big hits with the Antihero and Lavender Haze. Um, and then I would consider Midnight Rain kind of a fan favorite. That was one of my favorite songs from the Midnight's album. And I see that one kind of go viral on TikTok recently as well as Karma. So I think those were two really good. Um, in so I think those were two really good songs for that set list. <laughs> And then I will admit that I am not a big Vigilante shit fan. I don't personally love the song, but what she did to it production wise or like theatric wise was crazy. I don't think I ever would have thought that I would see like Taylor Swift on a chair doing like a sultry dance and like grinding, but she really made that song her own. So I, I will compliment that to the highest regards that even on the song that I really just did not care about, I was interested. <laughs> and then Mastermind was a very interesting part of the set list. I really didn't think that that would be on the set list, but it really was cool because um, when the part says the dominoes cascaded in the line, she had people, all of her dancers literally like cascading. Of a chain reaction to assess the equation. I could what if I told you none of it? So I think like she added a cool production to that song as well, but I think there might have been something better to replace that song with. I think like a 3am track would have been kind of cool. I personally would have liked Dear Reader a little bit more, but I know that probably isn't very hype for a concert, but that was one of my favorite songs, so that might be just kind of biased. But overall, that was my experience of the Eras Tour. I had a phenomenal time. I will always talk up this concert. I really look forward to going to another Taylor Swift concert when I know all of the songs because honestly, I've never seen a production so incredible. Um, I know I keep kind of saying the same adjectives, but there's really no other way to describe it. It was an absolute great experience. I've been to, I haven't been to that, that many concerts before, but the ones that I have fail in comparison to this one between the production budget the set list, the 
artistic integrity it just everything about it was such a great experience and then what helped me was i was around people that i love being around my family and then also like i said everyone that was at the tour kind of felt like family as well even though i didn't know them there was not one experience with people that i ever thought that they were rude or anything like that it was just such a nice community even walking out you were being corralled 60,000 people trying to get out of the parking lot and i still didn't even have a bad time everyone was like they even had someone just start chanting and like singing a song and people started singing along like they were all singing love story and there was people just walking around it was like 1 a.m in houston walking the streets and all you hear is just people singing songs and that just shows how big of a community this uh artist has really made for herself so nothing but love for the community and taylor swift um, I think that also attests to everyone that watches my videos on YouTube. I want to say thank you for everyone that is here. I know you guys act exactly how the real life Swifty community does. So just thank you for everything. I'm so excited that you have come on this journey with me. Um, as a lot of you know, also that this is kind of the reason why I started my channel is because I wanted to learn Taylor Swift's music in preparation for this concert. I'm really thankful that I did do that and I found a community with you guys. Um, I also want to say that if you are new here, thank you for watching this video as well. Um, as I was at the tour, I just saw the numbers on my phone just go up crazily. So just thank you for watching and thank you for supporting me in every way that you do. But thank you again and tell me what you thought of the concert if you went or tell me what you think in general. Uh, but thanks again and I'll see you in my next video.